First Christian Church in Dowagiac, Michigan. We're glad to be with you. And let's open today with prayer. Heavenly Father, what a, an amazing time that we live in right now. And you knew before the foundations of this earth the different events that would unfold in world history. And you are the one that reminds us every day that you never fail, that you're always faithful, that you always come through. And today we want to lift up our country and many countries of the earth dealing with this pandemic. We pray for your powerful hand to move upon people, to turn the hearts of people all across the globe, to turn the hearts of people to you. Because you are the one and only ultimate hope for our lives. You're the one that brings the very best. And Father, today we especially want to pray for those in our church that are going through different challenges. Uh, we, we lift up Sally and Terry. We pray for your presence to be very strong in their lives during this delicate, challenging time for them. And we think of others in our church. And some of them are... Um, quiet prayer requests and they're not known, but we know our brothers and sisters and our friends and our family members that are struggling and we pray that you would be that powerful presence to shine your light on, on those folks that are struggling today. And Father, as we open up your word, we pray that your Holy Spirit would come and activate the truth and illuminate the truth of your word that sets us free. We pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Well, today I want to simply open up and ask a couple very targeted, simple yet profound questions. Number one is, what valley are you going through right now in your life? It could be a big valley, it could be a small valley, a big challenge, a small challenge. But when you think about going through valleys, and some of us maybe we, we say, hey, I get to take a pass, things are going well in my life, and I'm not having to worry about valleys, but others are in the midst of a physical crisis, perhaps, with a physical uh, bill of uh, health that's not actually not a bill of health from the doctor. Some are going through financial challenges. Some, some folks relationally going through some valleys there. Some people um, in, in other ways. What is your valley today that you're going through? Because today we're going to talk about valleys and how God responds to us in the midst of our valley. And of course, Cor corporately and collectively, we've got the valley of this pandemic that we're all dealing with that is important to get closer to the Lord and get his voice on the matter of how he's available to us. So let's open up here in God's word to Psalm 23, verses four to six. And this is the shepherd's prayer um, that David provided for us. And David went through many valleys in his life and he met, went through many battle scars and challenges, and these words are powerful because they speak to us about valleys. Verse four, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you, Lord, are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And then verse six, Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now let's look at these verses. We're kind of one at a time. I want to go through and shed a little bit of light on these, these scripture passages because David gives us some real gold nuggets of truth that can really be a beacon light to us in a, in a dark hour, especially through our different valleys. If you look at that first verse that we looked at, verse four, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You think about valleys from the time, for, for those of you that have some headway um, that are a little bit more aged and experienced, you're beyond 50, maybe 60s, 70s, 80s, um, 90s, you look back on your life and you can look at a lot of valleys that you went through. And in this case, the psalmist is also mentioning about what is our ultimate, what the Bible says, greatest enemy, which is when we face, look at the prospect of facing death. 
and, and it's that last great enemy. In a way, it's that last great valley. Some of us have had close calls in life, right, where we thought, I can't tell you how many times driving in bad weather where I think God clearly had angels around to sustain me through some icy uh, snow and, and whatnot, some bad weather on the, on the highways, and uh, I could go on for a long time about. But we all have close calls, and we think, oh, this is gonna be it. And then when we get uh, to a certain place where our health really fades, um, we can get to a really difficult spot where we think, hey, this may be, my, my days may be numbered here on earth. But verse four, interestingly enough, no matter what the valley is, big or small, no matter the size of the valley, David says, I will not be afraid. He's making a choice. He's saying, I will not be afraid because you, Lord, are close beside me. And basically in that verse four, what David is telling us is that not only is God close beside us, but he's guarding us and he's guiding us all the time, 24 seven. I'd encourage you, if you really wanna get a encouraging and powerful sense of what that looks like, look at the prayer of St. Patrick. Google that sometime this week. Because the prayer of St. Patrick basically says, for Christians, for those that have received Christ into their hearts, not only does the Holy Spirit go before them, not only does he guard them and guide them and put his hand on them, and he's not only that, but he's above them, he's below them, but he's in them. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So the Holy Spirit literally, great thing, has, has you surrounded. We think of being surrounded in a negative term, but when it comes to being sur surrounded by the power of the Holy Spirit, there could be no greater thing. And because of that, David was able to declare, I will not be afraid. It wasn't because of David, he knew his humanness, but it was because of his theology and understanding of the Holy Spirit being with him. And so verse four is a powerful uh, understanding of when we go through dark valleys, that no matter what the size of the valley, no matter big or small, we can go with God through that valley without fear. Verse five, he says, even in the presence of my enemies, God is gonna keep on keeping on. God's gonna keep on protecting me. God's gonna keep on providing me for me, and God's gonna keep on nourishing me for, uh, through the, the time of, uh, to the point of even having enemies surrounding me. And David knew about that through his battles and his different experiences in life. But the point of it is, in our weakness, God is strong. We have a tendency, humanly, to think when we go through bad times, all of a sudden, God is absent. It's the opposite of that. The Bible declares it, that when we go through our weakest times, God is his strongest. And so he's not gonna stop protecting you. He's not gonna stop providing for you. He's not gonna stop nourishing you when you go through those deep battles and those dark valleys. It's the opposite. He's gonna come up and show up and showcase his power and his presence and his protection and his, and his provision in your life. And interestingly enough, so David gives us this idea, not only is God protecting them in the presence of his enemies, but God's preparing a banquet. God's anointing his head with oil. And God's, he's saying, my cup overflows, even in that sense of a valley of all those enemies. And then verse six, surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <clears throat> the point here, again, that David is letting us know about is that God's goodness and God's love is not gonna stop. It's gonna be like that Timex watch that keeps on ticking, doesn't stop, right? He's gonna keep on keeping on. And in this case, it's his, the goodness of God and the unfailing love of God that's gonna keep on going through all the days of your life. Now just take that in and meditate on these three verses for a minute and, and realize how secure and how confident and how strong you can be in the midst of whatever valley you're in to know that God, in a way, cocoons you. He puts you in his cocoon and no matter what's shaking and baking and no matter what feels like a emotional earthquake or a valley type of earthquake in your life, his unfailing love keeps on going and he will not fail. Remember this, Jesus said in John 16, 33, in this world you will have troubles, but take heart and be at peace because I have overcome the world. And so when we think about Psalm 23 and when we think about Jesus' own words in John 16, we know that he provides through the power of his spirit an ability to overcome that is supernatural in your life and mine. And he also promises 
to be the one who never, ever fails. So again, what's your valley today? What's your biggest valley? If you were alone today here at the, at the altar of the church and you were able to spend time with God, you, you and him alone in conversation and imagining Jesus with you, which he is with us because he's alive and he's with us through his presence, this, his Holy Spirit, what would you, as you bow your knees at the altar with no one else around, how would you bear your heart to the Lord? What would be that valley? What would be those different burdens, big and small, those different valleys, big and small, that you would bring to him? You might even have the freedom because you know how unfailing his love and power is to, to just cry before the Lord and say, Lord, these valleys are just, feel like I'm drowning in these valleys. Remember this, Jesus's, Jesus promise, promises to turn every valley into a victory in your life. We don't know when that's gonna happen, we don't know how, but we know that his power never fails. Tony Evans, um, a preacher, a pastor uh, that I have great respect for, has a quote, he says this, quote, God can intervene and interfere with people, places, processes, problems, predicaments, and he can do it suddenly. He can turn things around that quickly and that powerfully, end quote. He says again, God can intervene and interfere with people, places, processes, problems, predicaments, and he can do it suddenly. He can turn things around that quickly and that powerfully. This is the reason, this quote from Tony Evans, that we must not quit. We must not quit, we must not give up. In fact, I heard an illustration one time. If you think about the game of football, you start on the 20 yard line and you're going all the way down, hopefully 80 yards to score a touchdown. If you look at a football game, for those that you, of you who are aware of it, you, you might start at the 20, you have some good downs and some bad downs, you get sacked, you go through the ups and downs, you get knocked down, you have to get back up, but then you have a good play and it goes back and forth. But for the teams that endure and sustain themselves, they gradually move the, the ball down the field and they get all the way sometimes right down to the one yard line. And you know what's interesting? Sometimes in life, when we wanna quit, we forget we're on the one, one yard line. We're just moments away we're just a very brief amount of time away from scoring that touchdown. And so we must not quit because of the God we serve. We know he never fails. God's ability to reverse outcomes and turn valleys into victories, God's ability to change sequences, God's ability to interfere with what you thought could never change, God is all powerful. So we need to know who we're dealing with here today, right? We need to know who is involved, because God can take anything in your life and my life, and he can suddenly turn it around into your favor for your good and for your best. And so today, I wanna encourage every one of you to, to think of those verses in Psalm 23 and to realize that you and God are a majority. You're not a minority, just with you and God alone, because he's the God of heaven and earth, he's the God of infinite power, infinite love, He's the God that never fails. He will be your turnaround God. Now, we don't know the timing of that. You may be in a valley right now. So, for example, if I had a five-hour surgery, if I had a five-hour surgery and I'm on the surgery table and I have the best doctor in the world, but he says it's gonna take exactly five hours, if I, in the middle of the surgery, is three hours in, I wanna get up and stop, I completely miss the boat and I completely... Uh, become negative interference into what happens. Sometimes the point is that God has you in that valley for a certain amount of time. And he says, not yet, not yet. You gotta stay in, that, in that, that time zone, that valley. You gotta depend on my timing. Sometimes we're in that holding pattern where God is not through with us. He's active, he's involved, but he's giving us the enduring strength to kind of just wait on him, to trust in his timing. Doesn't mean he's not gonna turn that valley into a victory, it's just a matter of timing. And then eventually when the timing is right, he turns that valley in your life and my life into a victory. So what is that valley in your life today? Is it something to do with your, with your faith, with your relationship with God? Is there a valley that needs to get turned around and you need to come to him in a humble fashion and say, Lord, I realize my relationship with you needs to go to a higher level. I realize something's holding me back and he'll help you, he'll be present. 
So sometimes it's our faith. Sometimes it's our family. Because family brings heartache and it brings joy. And maybe there's a relationship in our lives with our families that has really burdens us because we know that particular family member is going through a hard time. And so we pray, pray, pray for that family member. We pray that their valley would become a victory. So there can be family valleys. There can be faith valleys. There can be future valleys. Some of us worry a lot about the future. We know that the Lord is not the one that brings worry. He's the one that says, do not worry, do not fear. So we know that's a different voice when we worry. It's our human voice and sometimes the voice of the enemy. But with the future, are we able to trust him to turn that negative thinking into a victory so we begin to think positively of the future? Or it could be finances. It could be any number of things. Today I invite you to lay it all down as if you were the only person at the church today, at the altar, lay every big and small valley that you feel like you're facing, every big and small burden that you're facing, lay it at the altar with Jesus and ask him, say, Lord, give me the wisdom and the vision and faith to know that you will never fail me and you will pour out infinite love, power, and at the right time, you will turn my valleys, every one of them, into victories. Let's pray for one another along those lines that God would give us that kind of vision and strength and understanding we need to know that he uses our valleys for purpose and he will not leave us there. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, what a great thing to know that in Psalm 23 there was a guy ordinary just like us named David who went through many different chapters of his life and he found as he went through those chapters and as he experienced many ups and downs, but specifically when he experienced those valleys, that you showcased your power because in our weakness, you are strong. And it's in those times that you especially reveal who you are. Are you not strong enough to handle our valleys? Lord, we know you are. Are you not powerful enough to handle our valleys? Lord, we know you are because you never fail. And so, Father, today for our church here in Dwajak, Michigan, we pray for every one of our friends and family members, everyone who's a part of this church and who's connected directly and indirectly, we pray for your unfailing presence to touch their lives. And then, Father, for others that are following the ministry of this church Uh, through the internet and hearing this message, we pray for them that your Holy Spirit would touch them as well. Father, we all, like never before, in challenging times, need a touch from you. And so refill us today with your Holy Spirit's presence and help us to set our eyes on you, the one who is the author and finisher of our faith and the one who never fails, who is perfectly, consistently faithful. We give our lives to you In Jesus' name, amen.
my soul 